Okay, I'm going to go over a little bit about the 1.3 lesson. Uh, we did get to look at the uh, various boxes in the beginning and kind of follow what would happen if we had some calcium chloride and we were adding some sodium carbonate. And we came up with two uh, little situations. One is if we were looking at, like here, the amount of calcium carbonate formed as we added the uh, uh, sodium carbonate, then we would see that the amount of calcium carbonate increased and increased and increased. And then at some point, it's not going to increase anymore because we've used up all of the uh, calcium ions. Uh, so it is just going to have a, a plateau here. And that's an important idea that if you saw that on a test or a question, you would understand why that did what it did. On the other hand, if we were looking at its conductivity, then conductivity uh, would be, you know, in the beginning where we had a lot of calcium and chloride ions, okay, the conductivity would be pretty high, and then it would drop down, it would drop down as you turn some of those ions into precipitates, but after you make the maximum amount of precipitate, so that links up with here, then the conductivity will start to increase as you add more sodium carbonate because you have more and more ions. So if we were trying to, you know, test the conductivity, we would see we would get a minimum when we have uh, uh, made the maximum amount of our precipitate, calcium carbonate. So both of these are useful ideas. Now, there were some practice problems at the end that we didn't really get to look at, so I'd like to take some time right now and just, you know, give you an idea of how you would have to approach these. So number six, consider this reaction, so sodium carbonate and calcium chloride turns into the precipitate uh, calcium carbonate, and then we're going to have sodium chloride left over in solution. So if I had a 100 milliliter calcium chloride solution is titrated to the equivalence point. So that is actually not important information. I mean, that just look at the numbers. So if we have some solution, and then we had 50 milliliters of 0.2 molar sodium carbonate solution, okay, then we want to know what's the concentration of the calcium chloride. So what does this titrated mean? That means that if we were to add the sodium carbonate, okay, add plenty of it, until we didn't get any difference in the calcium carbonate precipitate, like we saw before, that means this is the right amount of uh, sodium carbonate in order to use up all of our calcium chloride. Then we say, so what is the concentration of calcium chloride? Well, we know that concentration of anything but calcium chloride, that's going to be our moles of calcium chloride, uh, the um, original chemical divided by the liters of the solution already. So what's the concentration of the calcium chloride solution? Well, the calcium chloride solution is 100 milliliters, so we know that this bottom part is going to be 0.1 liters. So if we can find the moles of calcium chloride divided by 0.1 liters, that will give us our concentration of our uh, calcium chloride solution here in the beginning. So now we just use our stoichiometry ideas, and we're going to go back to those. So 50 milliliters, so this is what we have, we have 50 milliliters, so 50 milliliters of our sodium carbonate. Okay, we want to change milliliters to liters because we're going to use this uh, molarity as a conversion factor. And now we know that 0.2 moles per liter, so 0.2 moles of sodium carbonate for every one liter of our sodium carbonate solution. And we don't care about sodium carbonate, except that it's going to be a way for us to figure out our calcium chloride. So we're going to use our little um, molar ratio here. So for every one mole of sodium carbonate, we're going to have one mole of calcium chloride. And that's from our balanced equation up here. So when we calculate all of this, we are going to get the moles, because milliliters drop out, liters drop out, moles of that. We have moles of calcium uh, chloride, and we're going to divide by 0.1 liters that we had here, and that's going to give us the answer, our concentration. So that's practice problem number 6A. Now the second part is when 50 milliliters of that 0.2 molar sodium carbonate solution is added to 100 milliliters of calcium chloride solution, uh, 0.855 grams of precipitate is collected. 
what's the concentration of the original uh, calcium chloride solution. So here's our important little piece. Okay, now this is, you know, happened, but it's not actually going to be part of our calculation. So here we have 0.855 grams of precipitate. So that is our sodium carbonate. So let's change colors. So we have 0 0.855 grams of calcium carbonate. Now if we know grams, we can change to moles. And we're trying to find our uh, uh, calcium chloride solution. So if I know moles of calcium chloride, so from our, uh, I'm sorry, moles of calcium carbonate, so from our equation, for every time we get one mole of calcium carbonate, we must have used one mole of calcium chloride. So when we get done here, we can, so we have to calculate the calcium carbonate. Um, so you're going to put that number in. Then we're going to get a number here for moles. And again, like we did before, we just say moles divided by liters, and the liters would be 0.1 liters. So that is going to give us the concentration as well. So we have two different ways here to get the concentration of our calcium chloride solution. Now the third one here, um, consider this reaction. Okay, calculate the volume of carbon dioxide gas generated when 0.35 grams of sodium bicarbonate is added to excess vinegar, acetic acid. So this is our number we can start with, 0 0.350 grams of sodium bicarbonate. Now we can see what's going to happen. We're going to go from grams of sodium bicarbonate to moles of sodium bicarbonate. So we always kind of start by changing the moles. We have to calculate that and put it in. And then we don't really want moles of sodium bicarbonate. We want to get CO2. So we're going to say for every one mole of sodium bicarbonate, this comes from our balanced equation, then we can see we're going to get one mole of CO2 gas. Now, once we know how many moles of CO2 gas at STP, we can put one more step in and say one mole of gas is 22.4 liters of gas. Okay, I don't have a lot of room, but that would give me my value. So I could stop here and get moles of CO2 gas, and then I can go on one more step and get my volume of CO2 gas. Now down here, we can see, okay, if I have a temperature and pressure, that sounds like PV equals NRT. And if I want the volume, so the volume is equal to NRT over P. And if I take my answer from here, okay, that's my moles. Okay, my value of R. So I can change this to uh, atmospheres, uh, change this to Kelvin. Okay, I can put in my value of R from your uh, back of your yellow periodic table. Okay, we can put in the temperature and the, put in the pressure and that will give us the volume. So we can do the same kind of problem. We start with the moles from here and the rest of it is given in the problem. And that's how we do that problem. Okay, the last one here is saying that we have 100 milliliters of 0.1 molar K3PO4 and that's mixed with 100 milliliters of point, uh, 1 molar silver nitrate uh, forming a precipitate. List the ions that remain in solution in increasing concentration. So the first little piece of this is you have to remember that volume times molarity equals number of moles. And you can see that because you say volume, so liters, so 100 milliliters is 0.1 liters, times a concentration, which is moles per liter. So liters times moles per liter leaves us with moles. So 0.1 times 1 is 0.1 moles. I put the wrong thing. I wrote moles. And 0.1 moles. So we have 0.1 moles of uh, potassium phosphate, 0.1 moles of silver nitrate. Now we need to organize our information. So if I'm going to write out the equation, so K3PO4 plus 3 silver nitrates gives me the precipitate silver phosphate, and I'll have 3 KNO3s. So I wrote my balanced equation. From what we calculated, I know I have 0.1 moles of this and 0.1 moles of the two different reactants, and I'm starting off with zero of these. 
So I can see because this is a 3, I'm using this up 3 times faster, so this is my limiting reactant. So I'm going to use up all of my um, silver nitrate. So it's going to be minus 0.1. And as soon as I get any one of these values in this second row, I know them all because I know it's going to be in a 1 to 3 to 1 to 3 ratio. And so if it's 0.1 here, then this is going to be plus 0.1. If I'm using up 0.1, I'm using up 0 0.033, one third of that. And over here I'm making 0 0.0133, these are all moles. So what do I have at equilibrium and when, when I'm finished is I'm going to have zero silver nitrate. I'm going to have 0 0.1 minus 0 0.033, 0 0.067 moles of K3PO4. I'm going to make 0 0.033 moles of the of, uh, precipitate, silver phosphate and I'm going to make 0 0.10 moles of potassium nitrate. So I want to say, well, what ions are in solution? So I'm not worried about those, and these are all gone. It's just these two numbers here that I care about. So if I have 0 0.067 moles of K3PO4, then I know that my PO4 ion concentration is 0 0.067 moles divided by whatever my uh, uh, volume is. But my K plus is going to be three times that, which comes out to be 0 0.201 moles. Now for my KNO3, it's a little bit easier because there's one K and one NO3. So if it's 0 0.1 moles of KNO3, then I have 0 0.1 moles of the K plus and 0 0.1 moles of the NO3 minus. Now the question asks for me to list the ions in increasing concentration Okay, well, I have them in terms of moles, but that's going to be the same because they're all uh, in the same solution. There's going to be 200 milliliters of solution. So I could calculate, you know, divide each one of these by 0.2, mole, uh, 0.2 liters to get the concentration, but I can still answer the question. So who do I have most of? Okay, it looks like most I have is the potassium because I have some in both of these situations. So the greatest concentration would be the potassium. And it looks like the least I'm going to have is the phosphate, because 0 0.067 moles in my 0.2 liters, whereas my nitrate is 0.1. So this one's going to be like 0.3 divided by 0.2. This will be 0 0.67, 0 0.10. So my answer is phosphates. That concentration will be less than my nitrates. And that will be less than my potassiums, just by going by these numbers. So these two added together is the greatest. Okay, this one is the least, and this one's somewhere in the middle. And if it actually asked for my concentrations, not just the order, then I would take, add these two numbers together, divide by 0 0.2 liters, the total volume, and then I would take this one, divide by 0 0.2 liters, and take this number and divide by 0 0.2 liters, and I would get their concentrations. And those are the practice problems.